this is a story, a true story, of friendship, disaster, triumph and bravery on an unimaginable scale. It's the legendary tale of the Lancashire Fusiliers. Men from Salford, Manchester, Wigan and Bury who fought and died here on a foreign field 1,500 miles from home. But not before six men from the regiment would be awarded Britain's highest military honour, the Victoria Cross. Ordinary men who carried out extraordinary acts of bravery on the 25th of April 1915 during an invasion of Gallipoli. Turkey was very much an ally of Germany and uh, the Russians who were fighting on our side were also under threat and were under threat from Turkey as well. So there was a plan uh, put together to help the Russians uh, perhaps take out the Turks and relieve pressure on the Western Front. And that's how the Fusiliers and a large part of the British Army found itself fighting on the Gallipoli Peninsula. Today Gallipoli is a national park. It's one of the world's best preserved battlefields. You don't have to look too far to find the evidence of war, the remnants of the ill-fated campaign. And in the clear waters of the Mediterranean, dotted around the peninsula, boats once filled with troops which never made it ashore. The Lancashire Fusiliers were well trained and well disciplined. The regiment no stranger to military action around the British Empire, but nothing would prepare the men for the landing on W Beach in Gallipoli. A landing which would see Captain Cuthbert Bromley, Corporal John Grimshaw, Private William Kennedy, Sergeant Alfred Richards, Sergeant Frank Stobbs and Captain Richard Willis awarded VCs. Erkan Yavuz has been a Gallipoli guide for over a decade. His knowledge of the battlefields is simply second to none. More than 500,000 people died or wounded in, in a small battlefield. So uh, the number of the casualties are really uh, interesting for me. And wherever you step on, you can easily come across the skeletons, even today, because the area, the battlefield is full of with the un unidentified graves. This is exactly the same view the Fusiliers would have had as they approached W Beach at 6.30am on April the 25th. They get into the cutters and, and they move towards the shore and the, ex the impression is it's really quiet and, and it's almost enjoyable. But it's only when they get within two to three hundred metres of the shore that suddenly all hell breaks loose. The Turkish troops were waiting. The Lancashire Fusiliers were about to be decimated. In tomorrow's programme, death and glory on the beach and how six soldiers came to symbolise the bravery of a whole regiment. Paul Croner, ITV News, Gallipoli, Turkey. Today, Gallipoli in Western Turkey is a beautiful, serene place. On the 25th of April 1915, as the Allied forces attempting to strike a major blow to end World War I by capturing Constantinople, the British authorised an attack on the peninsula. The Lancashire Fusiliers' mission was to capture this beach, codenamed W Beach, a mission which would succeed but at a terrible price. The Turkish troops lay in wait on the cliffs above the beach as the Fusiliers headed for the shoreline.
Turkish troops opened fire as soon as the Fusiliers got near the beach. It was simply carnage. For those that weren't shot in their boats, in the water just below the surface lay a tripwire, and on the beach itself a belt of rusty barbed wire running along the whole length. In a matter of seconds the Fusiliers' rifles became clogged with seawater and sand, and shortly after that the sea turned crimson with the blood of the lads from Lancashire. The Lancashire Fusiliers had started the day with 27 officers and 1,002 men. At the next roll call, they numbered 16 officers and just 304 men. Many of the dead are buried here at the Lancashire Landing Cemetery overlooking the beach. An astonishing six men were awarded Victoria Crosses for their valour during the capture of W Beach. You don't fight for Queen and Country at the end of the day. You fight for your mates. And that's what drove them on and that's why at the end of the day individuals weren't awarded the Victoria Crosses. It was the unit. It was the first battalion of Lancashire Fusiliers that were awarded the VCs. And they, or those in the battalion, decided who should get them. This is the cane that was carried by Captain Willis on the 25th of April 1915 and he actually carried this at the Gallipoli landings and it is really famous because it's one of the sort of iconic moments on the beach where he held it up and shouted remember Minden to his soldiers um, as a way of encouraging them on the beach on that day um, because Minden was a really important battle for the regiment. Remarkably today, almost a hundred years on, the piers built after the landing at W Beach are still visible as are the boats which carried them ashore. This is the, one of the landing boats that were used during the landing operation on the 25th of April because of the heavy shell fire from the Turkish side, because of the damage, uh, she was grounded and today we can only see the traces, the skeleton of the boat. The, normally 30 or 35 British soldiers uh, were on this boat. In our final special report from Gallipoli tomorrow, history that lies beneath the warm waters of the Aegean Sea and what became of the six Lancashire Fusiliers who won Victoria Crosses. Paul Croner, ITV News, Gallipoli, Turkey. Gallipoli is one of the best preserved battlefields in the world and just off W Beach where the Lancashire Fusiliers landed lies evidence of the doomed campaign, the remnants of boats lost during battle. The regiment won six Victoria Crosses on the morning of the 25th of April 1915. Amongst them William Keneally for his part capturing the beach at Gallipoli. His medal can still be seen at the Fusiliers Museum in Bury. These are the typical um, medals that are won during the First World War and they used to be named Pipsqueak and Wilfred as, as a bit of a nickname. But obviously the most important thing here is his Victoria Cross which um, is one of the famous groupings from the Gallipoli landings. When we're looking at the, the action, the drive, the determination of those men, that is what Gallipoli means to, to members of the regiment today. It, it's, it's, it's amazing that they, they survived and indeed won in such difficult circumstances and that's what the six VCs means. So what happened to the VC winners? Keneally died fighting in Gallipoli on June the 29th and his body lies in the Lancashire Landing Cemetery. John Grimshaw from Abram near Wigan went on to become a Lieutenant Colonel and served in the army for over 40 years. He died in 1980, age 87. Sergeant Frank Stobbs survived the landing in Gallipoli but died in action later that day. His body was never found. Sergeant Alf Richards and Captain Willis both survived Gallipoli. Willis died in 1966 and Richards in 1953. The final Victoria Cross winner was Captain Cuthbert Bromley. Now he was wounded several times in Gallipoli and was eventually evacuated to Egypt to recover but he was so desperate to rejoin his comrades that he boarded a 
troop ship bound for Gallipoli to do just that. The troop ship was sunk by a German U-boat with a loss of 866 lives and Captain Cuthbert Bromley's body was never recovered. In total, the British advanced just four kilometres in nine months. The Australian and New Zealand forces just one kilometre. And we had one last task before we left Turkey to place an angel sent to us from William Keneally's great-great-niece to watch over him and all the other Lancashire Fusiliers who never came home. It was decided as a result of the First World War that everybody would be treated equally. Whether you were a general or a private soldier, you would get the same grave, the same honours, in the same circumstance. So rich families couldn't bring their loved ones home while poor people couldn't. So everybody was treated exactly the same. So the sons of lords lie next to the sons of you know, club makers from Bury. And I think that is entirely fitting. That's where they served, that's where they died, that's where they did their bit. Paul Cronin, ITV News. Gallipoli, Turkey.